So this is our this week segment, and this is where I discuss what I believe is important for individual investors to consider before you make your investment decisions over the next couple of weeks. As you can see here, we're going to touch upon three things, as we always do. This week, we're going to talk about economic data to watch, corporate earnings seasons about to kick off at the end of this week, and contrarian investing, something I touch on every now and again. But I think it's really important to think about being a contrarian at this time, uh, beginning of the year when so many things are so cheap. So let's touch, start with economic data to watch. Probably the most important economic data that will be coming out starts tomorrow. We're going to see or, or, or receive inflation data out of the U.S. CPI will be reported tomorrow. Next week, we're going to get Canadian inflation data. And the Fed and Fed governors have already said that they're going to be looking at this number uh, very closely tomorrow in the U.S. Bank of Canada, I'm sure, is looking at the number that will be coming out in about a week's time. So this CPI report will be crucial to what the Fed is going to do at their next meeting. Will they raise 25 basis points? Will they raise 50 basis points? Right now, the market is believing that 25 basis points will be what will happen. But if we do see a hot inflation number, perhaps that goes to 50 basis points. And I think we have some inflation charts as well to put up that we can uh, that we can show, uh, showing that inflation is starting to come down. There's a Canadian inflation. Uh, you can see the chart going straight up almost and then coming down towards the end there at the end of last year. Uh, we're sitting at a rate of just under 7%. I'm sure the Bank of Canada would like to see this number a lot lower, a lot closer to 2%, but we've come down from about 8% or over 8% to now just under 7 In the U.S., I believe we have a chart on that as well, they've come down from 9% to about a 7.1% rate. And uh, when you take out the volatile uh, food and energy, you're looking at a number that's in and around 6%. So economic data will be crucial to for investors to consider when you make your investment decisions over the next few weeks. Corporate earnings season, I guess the second topic I wanted to touch on today, that is about to begin. Now we have received some earnings recently. Nike reported a fantastic result. I think as China reopens, Nike is definitely benefiting from that. But overall, corporate season, the way we look at it, really doesn't kick off until we get the US banks reporting earnings which will happen this Friday. Four of the largest banks in the United States will be reporting their last quarter, how they fared, what are they seeing going forward. And as we know, banks are the bloodline of any economy. So if banks are saying things are getting a little bit more difficult, we're seeing a slowdown in the economy, obviously that won't bode well for the overall stock market. But if these banks are saying they see a strong consumer as they have been saying, and if they continue to say people are spending, they're using their credit cards, and they still have savings in their bank accounts, that would be a positive for investors and the stock market. And I think that the banks have probably the best look at, or what they tell us is the best viewpoint for individual businesses going forward. They give us where things are at. They are able to tell us where things are at. So here we have Bank of America, a chart that you're looking at. As uh, many of the bank charts we're going to put up here, you can see how far Bank of America has come down, down roughly about 30% from its high. Bank of America makes a lot of money from what we call net interest margin, the spread between what they pay individual investors and what they uh, uh, charge uh, for, for loans. So the spread there, Bank of America is one of the best. They make a lot of money from that. If we go to the next bank chart, JP Morgan, the largest bank, one of the largest banks in the world, definitely largest bank in North America, they're going to report as well. And you can see that their stock prices come up quite a bit, very different chart than Bank of America, which is still down by quite a bit. Uh, another bank chart we could pull up here, Citibank. Again, you can see towards the end of this chart, Citibank has ticked uh, uh, significantly higher, down to about $40 a share. Today, it's 48 this bank is interesting because it pays over a 4% dividend. One of the few that pay over a 4% dividend of the US banks. I actually, they're the only bank that pays over 4%. And last but not least, Wells Fargo. I think we have a, a chart on that as well. And you can see for the most part, with the exception of JP Morgan, you can see all these banks 
have started to do a lot better towards the end of last year. But corporate earnings and the kickoff to corporate earnings is definitely something I believe individual investors need to focus on as they make, of course, their investment decisions. The last topic I wanted to, to discuss or to mention to individual investors is this idea of being a contrarian, a contrarian approach to investing. And why I think today it's really important. When you look at where the stock market ended 2022, a lot of the stocks were down 20%, 30%, maybe even more than 40%, especially if you consider some of the uh, sectors like technology, which we'll touch on uh, later in the show. But being a contrarian investor, you know, it takes a, an iron stomach sometimes to get into a, an investment idea when everybody else is bailing out of it or selling their shares. It takes an iron stomach to buy something when it's at a low, when everybody is saying that this is not a, a, a name that you want to be in right now. I think actually gives that gives us an opportunity to buy things on the cheap. If you want to buy low, sell high, as the saying goes, you have to look at some of these fallen angels, some of these names that are good quality, but for whatever reason are just down right now. And if you believe that some of these names will be higher in the future, these are the names that I think you want to get into. And so you have names, a lot of names in some of the, in some of the tech space, like an Amazon or a Meta, which we'll talk a bit about a little later. These are names I think you could take a look at. This whole notion of contrarian investing, buying when those are fearful, something that Warren Buffett made famous a long time ago. You could look at other sectors as well. We touched on banking, but you could look at retail. There's some names even in pharmaceutical, a sector that did quite well last year that I think you can get into this year that didn't do as well uh, as some of the other pharmaceutical names. So being a contrarian, I think, affords you the opportunity to buy into some good quality names that are extremely cheap so that when things get better, maybe not in the next month or so, maybe 6, 12, 18 months from now, I think you could, by being a contrarian investor, I think you can do fairly, fairly well in a lot of these good quality names. And of course, if these names pay you a dividend while you wait for that growth, while you wait for a rebound, in my opinion, that's always the best recipe for success.